Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, Rick. I appreciate that. Uh, we just want to welcome you to our La Posada virtual panel discussion focused on heart health during COVID-19 and its importance. Uh, we've got a great lineup for you of some speakers, which I'll introduce here in a minute. But as Rick said, my name is Brad Cadier, and I'm the executive director. I've been here at La Posada for about eight years uh, as the executive director, and I've been um, an executive director in senior living for over 21 years years. It's really all I've ever done uh, is serve seniors. Uh, I think I got that from uh, being raised by my grandparents uh, out in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I have a lot of fond memories of, of being with them growing up, and I think they have a lot to do with, uh, with me choosing my career uh, serving seniors. I couldn't think of anything else I'd rather be doing uh, than that. Uh, we've got some great speakers today lined up. Uh, we've got uh, Dr. Gardner, who's a cardiologist from Palm Beach Medical Center. He's going to talk about heart health matters. We've got one of our executive chefs, Clay Bourdain. He's a five-star executive chef, and he's going to talk about nutrition for the heart. We also have Rick, who you just met. He's our wellness director, and he's going to talk about heart wellness. And most importantly, we think it's, an, um, it's important to hear directly from residents of La Posada, so we got some of our best residents um, that uh, agreed to participate uh, as they always do every month on our panel discussions. And so we got some great residents who are gonna speak as well about things that matter to them during COVID and about heart health specifically. So at this time, uh, we would normally go to Dr. Gardner. We had him first. Um, we're gonna actually put him um, at the bottom uh, at the, at the, on the list because we wanna, um, he's actually has a procedure that he's involved in right now. And so his, certainly his focus should be on that patient. Uh, he does believe and state that he'll have an opportunity to jump on later on the call. So we look forward to hopefully seeing him. So next, I wanna do a welcome uh, to Clay Bourdain. I wanna give you a little bit of information about Clay. Clay has worked uh, in the restaurant and food service industry since he was 15 years old. He has been a skilled and talented chef for over 33 years. Clay has been the executive chef at Majorca since uh, we opened it in 2018. We are very fortunate to have such a talented chef really redefining what cuisine is in our industry. The reason he's able to do that is he has spent years honing his expertise uh, over his career, but especially at his last two ventures, which were Clay's La in La Jolla, that was in La Jolla, California, and Tabla de los Santos, sorry, Clay, I ruined that, in the historic Santa Fe, New Mexico area. You're probably asking yourself, as I did, why would someone of that caliber want to work here at La Posada, a senior living community? I can tell you La Posada, first and foremost, is a five-star leader in our industry. So that's always a natural draw for getting top talent to come here as our associates um, to our community. However, the real reason, Clay, he approved me to be able to share this with you, uh, is that he has been, uh, is because he made the decision to relocate across the country uh, due to the love that he has for his parents and his desire to be with them and, and during their golden years. So we owe it to them, his parents, really, for, for opening his eyes at this point in his career of how he can use his talents and his skills to serve seniors. So Clay has a few famous sayings I want to share before I turn it over to him. I'd like to share those with you. So first, he always says, keep it simple, cook it fresh, and present it with originality and attention to detail. The second is our restaurants, because we have four here on property, are the best local restaurants locals can't go to. Uh, and so I think these philosophies are evident on every plate that comes out of Chef Clay's kitchen. There's never a night that you won't find Chef Clay on the line with his team, ensuring that every plate is up to his standard. So Clay, I wanna turn it over to you so you can talk about what you're passionate about. Thanks Brad for that great introduction. Can everybody hear me? I wanna make sure I'm unmuted. Uh, first of all, Tabla de los Santos was the name of the restaurant in Santa Fe, Table of the Saints. So, uh, but anyways, thank you for the great introduction. Uh, I always get really excited and I'll start talking way too much when we start talking about La Posada and Mallorca and the dining programs. And what we built here as a team, uh, we're taking mainstream cooking, uh, mainstream techniques, uh, farm to table, organics, things you hear about from really top high-end restaurants 
and we're incorporating it into what we do on a daily basis here for our residents. And uh, just to kind of add to that, the Kisco and La Posada, what made it attractive for me to be here as well is their trust in me to be as creative as I like, to try different things, to, to kind of impose uh, my being of, of eating healthy, of uh, not necessarily faking people or hiding ingredients, but using higher end ingredients, using, using uh, different cooking techniques as a more healthier approach to how we do our cuisine and presenting it to me in a beautiful package, a beautiful restaurant, beautiful community, great residents, you know, they've welcomed me with open arms and it's, uh, it's great to come to work every day for that. So Clay, you're on, um, you're on, we can't hear you. I just wanted to ask you um, a couple of questions as you think about um, what we talked about yesterday. You know, um, even though Dr. Garner wasn't here to sort of introduce the flow of all of this, he did, um, you know, note that nutrition was such an important part of heart health and that so much over the past year, uh, many of our seniors have neglected that area, they've neglected the exercise. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you do specifically for heart healthy cuisine? Sure, it's, it, starts, uh, it starts from the ground up with every attention to detail. Uh, first of all, we wanna bring in great ingredients. We want local ingredients, we want fresh ingredients. And kind of our, I'll call it a hippie mentality. Uh, this beautiful produce, this beautiful meat that we get in is taken care of. It's brought in, it's washed, it's trimmed, it's clean, it's put into our coolers, it's uh, monitored. So we start off with our product being great. Where we kind of change that is we take the approach of a scratch kitchen. So if we're gonna make uh, just a basic chicken soup or a chicken noodle soup, we don't put a Lipton bouillon or a big paste in there. We take a we take whole chicken, we roast it, we boil it, we remove the bones, we uh, make a stock from that, we make it pure. The meat we take off and, and that goes into the soup. Uh, to, to give it another little trick is, uh, if we want if we want to put a meatball in the soup, if we want to do Italian wedding soup, which calls for a meatball, well, this month we're, we're doing it with chicken meatballs. You know, we're trying to cut down on, onto the, a lot of the red intake, red meat intake and things like that. But it becomes a huge balance. You know, all menus that we, we do here are kind of methodically thought out. We try to think of what's going to pair well with what they're eating. What, uh, what, what can we make really interesting that they would not necessarily want to have? It could be just, you know, between a chicken or a pasta dish or, you know, a simple, a simple salad. You know, how can we make that interesting where we can sway our residents into trying something different and trying something a little bit more healthier with our ingredients? So when taking that approach, well, if we're going to make our soup stocks from scratch and we're going to make our sauces from scratch, well, we should be making our dressings from scratch. If we're going to make our dressings from scratch, we should be baking our own bread. And uh, if we're going to be doing that, we should now start monitoring what's coming in our door from our purveyors. Uh, if I if I order canned tomatoes, if uh, if it has more than four ingredients and there's ingredients I I don't even know what they are, it, it doesn't come into the kitchen. So when we're taking more pure approach to our ingredients, we have to have a little bit more creative ways of seasoning with it. You know, most places oh let's add salt, let's add this, let's add that, let's spice it up, let's put a lot of spice into it. We want to keep it more pure of what what our residents are getting. So if they get a chicken stock or a beef stock, or if they're having a piece of fish, it's not diluted with a bunch of, bunch of different items, but what accompanies it is what gives it its flavor as well. So if the potato matches good, maybe it's a nice roasted fingerling potato and a nice, uh, nice organic zucchini or you know, with that piece of fish and we'll grill the lemon to bring out the sweetness of the lemon. You know, so it all kind of matches and you, know, you can't go that old approach of you know, uh, potato, veggie and, and, uh, and protein on the same plate, just in each corner, we stack it. We add the ingredients on top of how we think we should eat it with it. Not, not saying it's the best way, you know, it comes down to a lot of taste pre preferences and things like that, but, but uh, you know, that's kind of how, how we start. And then we, we finish the whole process with our desserts. I know all the ingredients that go into our desserts. I know the five ingredients that go into our bread. So I'm not seeing, I'm not buying in these processed pies and stuff that they're going to have in the restaurant. 
we're using fresh berries to make our cobbler. We're making fresh streusel. We're using, instead of using heavy creams, we're using, uh, we're using skim milks. You know, we're trying to, trying to get away from things like that. So it's a, it's a lot healthier approach. And uh, whether our residents know it or not, it's kind of behind the scenes. We don't have to write on every menu that, hey, this is organic tomatoes, or this is local fingerling potatoes, and this is wild caught this. La Posada lets me, gives me a good freedom to do what I want to do. So I want to do the right thing. And I want to cook as if I was going to cook for my mother or my friends or family. Sorry, I got a little choked up. Another thing that you said yesterday was um, how you really enhance the flavor and you pay attention to your residents. You can tell if they're down or if they're, um, you know, maybe not, not walking as well or something. And so I know you take personal pride in really um, understanding what those residents might need, especially if they need a customized meal. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, sure. Now, good thing about, uh, about working here is I, I do get out of the kitchen. Not often, but I do get out of the kitchen. I try to get out on a daily basis. I want to see our residents. I want to see how they're doing. I want to, you know, unfortunately for COVID, you know, I, I can't give them a hug. I can't, you know, put my arm around them. But I, I do notice, I do notice what, what they're ordering. I notice if they're ordering too much red meat. I notice I have a res recent resident that every night she was eating a filet mignon. And finally, I took her aside and I said, I said, why are you, why are you having a filet mignon every night? She goes, oh, someone told me I should have more protein and I need to eat. And so with a little bit of education talking with her and I said, well, let's try some chicken. Let's try some, some fish. Let's you can get protein out of vegetables. You know, it's not just stuff yourself with red meat. And so that's just a, a, just a small part of it. But yeah, when, when a resident is down or maybe they had some bad news or maybe they're missing their family, you know, I want, I want to do something nice for them. I just can't help myself. So I like to know what, what they like on a personal side. It could be something decadent. It could be something different, something we don't even serve on a menu. And uh, I want to make sure they get it out to their table and know that they didn't ask for it, but at least somebody's kind of has their back and thinks of them, so. Yeah, that's really special. Hey, Brad, do you see that Dr. Gardner has made it to the call? He is on mute, but he is here. Hey, wonderful. Another thing real quick, Clay uh, didn't mention uh, just before we jump to Dr. Gardner is, um, you know, how much it means for him to serve the residents during COVID. And when we were locked down, which we're not, not any longer, um, we had some residents that had special milestone birthdays uh, and Chef Clay reached out to them uh, independently on his own, found out what their favorite meal ever was. And he created and crafted their favorite dish hand delivered it on China to their unit in celebration of that special milestone birthday during that time. And so he did that many a times uh, over the past year and no one had to ask him to do that. He did that on his own because of the love that he has for the residents here at La Posada. So real quick, uh, Dr. Gardner, thank you so much for joining us. We hope everything How you doing? Uh, well with the, yeah, with the procedure. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy day uh, to speak to, to all of us. Um, before uh, Dr. Gardner speaks, I just wanna introduce uh, him to all of you. Uh, Dr. Uh, James Gardner is a cardiologist with fellowship training in general and invasive cardiologists. And he has joined the Tenant Florida Physician Services and he's opened an office with the Jupiter Cardiology Group joining Dr. Craig Vogel um, and Dr. Raul um, Agrawar, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Gardner Jr. specializes in invasive cardiology, congestive heart failure, preventative medicine, hypertension, clinical and nuclear cardiology, and endocrinology or endocardiography, sorry. He is a certified um, by the American Osteopathic Board of Internal Medicine. And Dr. Gardner Jr. is an on staff at Palm Beach Gardens Medical Center. And so thank you so much. It's an honor for you to join us today and, uh, and speak to all of us. Oh yeah, no worries. I appreciate you having me. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I was I asked to come here to kind of speak as far as, you know, what we do as far as our health is concerned, specifically our cardiovascular health. Uh, when it comes to, you know, what we should do during the pandemic and, you know, what are some of the do's and don'ts and what are the important things to remember when it comes to, you know, heart health. Um, 
you know, when it comes to COVID, unfortunately, you know, COVID affects a lot of things and, and people it's synonymous with, you know, affecting the lungs and everything, uh, but it also affects the heart and heart health is important in preventing um, a COVID infection, uh, let alone a, a serious, um, you know, COVID infection. Um, so, you know, from my standpoint, you know, with the, with the patients, the residents and the, the, the living care facility, their heart health is very important, especially their um, blood pressure, heart failure, um, and, uh, and, and those are some of the basic things, you know, there as well as AFib, heart disease, what have you, um, you know, some of the leading things that can lead to a worse, uh, or COVID infection or, um, things that can go unchecked or hypertension. So, um, it's a simple thing that, you know, we check on a day by day basis, person's blood pressure, but that really can affect someone from getting a severe COVID infection. Um, and it's one of the leading causes of what would cause, you know, hospitalization and the patient need to be on oxygen is uncontrolled hypertension, uh, let alone just controlling that on a day by day basis. And sometimes with the infrequent contact that we have, people aren't getting their blood pressure checked, what have you. So sometimes it's good for the resident to check their blood pressure on their own if they can, or, you know, have those people in to make sure that's not uncontrolled because that's one of the top five uh, leading causes of a serious COVID infection, along with heart failure. Uh, diabetes, respiratory disease, and cancer. So it's one of the top two. Um, the other one is heart failures, um, you know, and it's very important for people that do have underlying heart failure um, that they make sure that that is treated and not out of control and that they're able to make sure that they remain healthy because if they don't, uh, then again, they can get a serious COVID infection. And that is again, one of the leading causes of serious COVID infection um, and admission to the hospital. Um, so prevention is very key. and um, you know, seeing, you know, a cardiologist is very important, uh, you know, in, in that part, because you can kind of detect these things before they happen. Um, or, you know, um, or even, you know, after the fact, and God forbid that someone does get a COVID infection after the fact, because those things can go out of, uh, out of line too, if not controlled. Um, so it's very important to keep an eye on those things, as well as our general heart health, but specifically like uh, those um, AFib, which is like an uncontrolled heart rate. So if a nursing staff or someone's going in and sees that the person uh, does have evidence of, you know, um, a rapid heartbeat or they feel symptoms suggestive of that or shortness of breath, that's another reason that they probably want to get, uh, you know, checked out by, you know, someone from the nursing staff or even come in and see their cardiologist. So the three, you know, the three major things and in, 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 aside from just prevention and making sure that you follow up on a regular scheduled uh, basis, even if it's a telemed appointment, if you can't make it to your regular scheduled appointment, everything like that is making sure that, you know, that your blood pressure is controlled, your heart rate is stable, you're not going in and out of AFib or anything like that. And also making sure that, you know, you just keep up with your general appointments, even if it just be um, a simple, um, you know, uh, follow-up appointment through Zoom, um, it allows us to make sure that everything's on track for you to remain healthy uh, through the pandemic and uh, anything that may come. Uh, um, another important thing, it's just a heart health and everything like that is, you know, that um, overall and everything that, you know, keep keeping uh, track of, like, like you said, like, you know, what you're eating, uh, what you're doing um, is very important. Um, so eating a balanced meal, not just like, you know, you know, eating, you know, you know, you know, steak and lobster every day uh, is probably, you know, advisable and staying away from, uh, you know, you know, a ton of salt um, as well and everything like that, because that leads to hypertension, heart failure, those type things. So diet is very important as well as exercise during the pandemic and prevention. Um, and so sometimes the accountability has kind of gone out of the window, as well as that people don't have access to as much of the group exercising that they used to do, or even the gyms or what have you. And so it's important to do, you know, at home or in your facility exercising as much as possible, as that will reduce your risk of having issues and also just your general health um, as well. So um, those are just some tips and everything that I would suggest. And don't, you know, neglect your health, especially your heart health, um, even though you may not be able to make it to the doctor um, at all times, at least maybe try to do a Zoom call. Um, those are some things to look after and try to exercise, eat well, low salt diet are um, some things that we should, you know, really strive to do uh, to, uh, for prevention. And then um, if you do have any questions or anything like that, if any like the residents do or anybody um, has any questions and you can ask me, uh, specifically pertaining to any concerns that you may have. If any of you guys do want to uh, facilitate some questions, you can either, um, I'm not probably not going to say this the right way, Rick, but um, I think you can 
raise your hand or say something down there in the bottom. Um, but I do see one question that's come in, Dr. Gardner. Um, you talk a lot about prevention, which I think is super important. I think everybody's been focused on COVID and the pandemic and the mask and getting the vaccine. Um, and I think we have a tendency to sort of forget or maybe ignore some of the um, signs of, of any other kind of heart disease or anything like that. Is there anything that you would advise? Um, maybe you've got some spouses together who can see what's happening with each other or an adult child. Is there anything that we should be looking for in that regard? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, as far as, you know, keeping track of your heart health again, you know, keeping track of the blood pressure is very important. Um, so, you know, you're making sure that you don't have uncontrolled high blood pressure um, or anything like that. Um, you know, checking there, swelling again, which goes along with heart failure, uh, making sure that that is okay. Uh, just seeing if people are like being deconditioned uh, more so than, um, than um, otherwise, because just simple shortness of breath sometimes can, um, you know, you know, be a harbinger, you know, for, for COVID or um, potentially, you know, worsening heart failure or, you know, you know, AFib or, uh, or general deconditioning from heart health, because unfortunately heart disease is still, you know, the number one killer. So, you know, like, like these days, and now that we're inside, not really moving around exercise as much and eating as well, um, you know, that, that stuff kind of falls by the wayside. So keeping your friends and family members accountable for their weight, even as simple as their weight is very important for heart health and, you know, um, and, and doing that. I think this is a great question. Um, is it safe for me to go see my doctor right now? I've been putting it off. Yeah, I, I do definitely think it's safe. Um, you know, everybody, you know, obviously has their own risk and everything, um, but it, it, it has become a lot safer. Um, for example, in our office, you know, everybody has been vaccinated. Um, I remember a tenant uh, for physician services, so we have, have been vaccinated through them. Um, so that is a good thing. And we use, you know, um, precautionary measures um, you know, we can do things through Zoom um, if you don't feel it's safe. But one of the things that is important in cardiology is, again, when I talk about simple things like blood pressure, heart rate, you know, all that stuff and EKG, a lot of stuff, especially in cardiology, needs to be done in person. It's not as, um, it, 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 some of that stuff is, is, is really best to be done in person. So there are certain specialties that benefit from being done in person. Cardiology is especially one of those because of all those um, you know, vitals and factors that we're able to attain from an in-person visit. Now, here's another one that says, um, well, I've been putting this off. It's been about a year. Would you recommend that I get into the doctor right away or start with a telemedical uh, exam or come? If, right. Yeah. I mean, if, uh, you know, I, I'm obviously like in clients, like an in-person, you can do the EKG, um, you get your vitals and everything like that. But if you have no heart problems underlying or anything like that, then you could start with a telemed visit. I think that's okay. Um, if you have no underlying heart issues and just need a general checkup. And then at that time, if we determine that, you know, something needs to be done in person, you know, or some type of testing, we can do it at that standpoint. Um, I do that. I'm seeing um, another question here that says, uh, I don't believe that I've ever had any symptoms regarding my heart, but during this COVID um, situation, I definitely feel a shortness of breath. I feel more, much more anxiety. Do you think that the uh, pandemic has caused some additional stress that we need to be paying attention to, not just the usual heart disease runs in my family? Yeah, I mean, stress is a big important of heart disease. Um, it does lead to, um, you know, it, you know you know, sometimes, you know, people developing heart disease earlier than they should and everything like that. So stress relief is very important. So it's something that you should look into, um, you know, palpitations, feeling your heartbeat funny, stuff like that. that goes along with stress, but pandemic itself is a stressful type of situation. Um, so it does accelerate things. And so that may make you more in tune with your heart and the way you're feeling. Um, so it, 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 it definitely is a contributing factor and everything like that. Uh, but if stress and anxiety is preventing you from going to see a doctor or a cardiologist for that matter, um, then I would think that the actually going to see them and getting evaluated is going to be more important than waiting because, um, you know, you could be missing something. Okay. And last question, does, um, do you think that the vaccine ha will have any implications on heart situations? Should I be scared of the vaccine? No, you should not be scared of the vaccine. Um, you know, the side effect profiles, um, relatively uh, mild compared to, you know, actually getting COVID, of course, uh, but even the side effects after the second shot um, are, are, are much smaller. There have been no, you know, directly linked, 
you know, uh, th things to heart, um, you know, per se, um, you know, you know, as compared to other um, complications um, with the vaccine. Uh, so to me, you know, if you uh, are able to get the vaccine, uh, then I think you should get the vaccine and not put it off. Brad, do you want to add anything to that? Thank you so much, Dr. Gertner, for coming today. No worries. Thank you. Yeah, th no, thank you very much. And the, the high points that he mentioned for everyone is really didn't have to worry about those things. During COVID, you know, we had executive chefs making healthy, nutritious meals um, as we were locked down with the rest of the country at the time. We were doing exercise programs almost on a daily basis outside. Residents would join us outside distance or from their patios. Um, and we had a great time with that. And so we focused on health, nutrition, um, and wellness um, for our residents during this past year. I think it was beneficial to be a resident of La Posada. So, so thank you, Dr. Gardner, for joining us today. We appreciate you taking time out of your day. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Next. You're welcome. Next, uh, I want to transition over to Rick Minichino. Rick has been the wellness director at La Posada since 2013, and he oversees the programming and the transportation for our community. Rick holds a master's degree in exercise physiology and he uh, and various certifications for seniors and specialized uh, populations. Rick and his team are dedicated to enhancing our residents' lives and experiences through the art of living well, which is a Kisco living program approach to total body wellness. Rick's joy comes from working with seniors and helping them in independent, um, to remain independent and engaged here at La Posada. Um, Rick and I have worked together. I remember hiring Rick back in 2013 and, and interviewing with me. I was the brand new ED here. And uh, Rick came in kind of green. Uh, he had never worked in senior living. He'd always done exercise phys physiology, worked with seniors and coached and did all kinds of wonderful things. But he was a little green, but I really I saw in him um, the ability to, to, to really translate the things in his knowledge to the benefit of our residents and, and what I knew he could do to impact their lives and keeping them independent and keeping them safe. Um, and he's just such, done an amazing job here over the past uh, eight years or so. So Rick, I'd like to open up the, uh, the floor to you next. Well, thank you very much, Brad. And uh, thank you for that wonderful introduction. So today, what I'm gonna focus on is wellness and heart health here at La Posada, particularly with programming for our residents. So here at La Posada, our wellness team focuses on six dimensions of wellness when we create our programs. Uh, these dimensions are physical, emotional, vocational, spiritual, intellectual, and social. Each one of these dimensions has a direct or indirect link to heart health. I'm gonna save the physical for last, but first I wanna talk about the social dimension, which is so important. Uh, as we navigate this meeting through a Zoom call, uh, it, it cannot be understated how much the pandemic has increased our social isolation, even to this day for seniors who have or have not been vaccinated. To lower your risk of heart disease, you need to get out and meet people. Loneliness and social, social isolation were linked to an increase in heart disease, in, you know, according to a review of studies published online in 2016 by the journal Heart. So in this study, researchers examined 23 other studies that involved 181,000 adults. Among this group, almost 5,000 heart-related events, such as heart attacks, angina attacks, or even death were recorded. The data showed that loneliness, social isolation, or both were associated with a 29% increased risk of heart attack. This risk was like that of light smoking or obesity, according to the researchers. Loneliness has already been linked to a weaker immune system and high blood pressure. The findings suggest that having a stronger social network is very beneficial for your well being and health, and that maintaining existing relationships and forging new friendships could be an effective form of disease prevention. So, this is one of the great things about life at La Posada there are an ever growing number of opportunities to get out and meet people. Throughout the pandemic, uh, as Brad described, we've had to be creative with how we brought residents together to socialize safely. We had to do outdoor exercise classes around the lake, outdoor concerts, outdoor bingo all the way down the community. 
Wii bowling tournaments, parades, just to name a few. Uh, we walk door to door delivering meals, packages, uh, activity packets, making sure we were able to check on residents when they could not come down to the clubhouse. So over 90% of our residents have received their second dose of the vaccination. And now we're able to begin to re-envision how we can bring residents together, still with some restrictions, but closer to that of the BC times, that's before COVID. Residents can now enjoy indoor games with each other, like bridge, maja, canasta, bingo. We can have indoor concerts with entertainers that are COVID tested prior to performing. We can enjoy trips outside of the community and enjoy this outside weather that, you know, unfortunately the rest of the country was not as lucky to have in the past few weeks. Being able to take a painting class together or get the book club started again, or even just getting together for conversation outside is a step in taking back our social health. And that is so great for your heart. Our residents' emotional and spiritual health has been affected as well. Much in the same way that physical isolation takes its toll, emotional and spiritual isolation affects us all. And that stress that Dr. Gardner talked about can manifest physiologically. Many of us have lost someone we know or have been personally affected by the pandemic. We've had to attend virtual funerals, virtual celebrations of life. Churches and synagogues have been forced into virtual services and are now starting to open back up. Uh, with the help of some of our resident council committees, we've been able to offer counseling group chats for both men and women struggling with whatever personal feelings they're dealing with right now as a result of the pandemic. Uh, our residents can attend church or synagogue if they feel safe. And if not, we can still offer those visual and virtual alternatives. Our next dimension that I wanna talk about is vocational. And we use this dimension of wellness to describe the actions of residents in finding purpose in their days, mainly by how they can volunteer their time for the benefit of all here at the community. That sense of purpose, what the Japanese call ikigai, or your reason for being, can lower stress and lower blood pressure and help with depression and your heart will thank you for that. Our residents are active and serve in a number of committees, helping with programs, welcoming other new residents to the community. Um, just one of the many ways that they all get involved, including being on this Zoom call. Uh, this month we raised over $800 for the American Heart Association. Yes, it was at a bake sale, but so many residents were involved with our Go Red for Women campaign, um, highlighting the number one killer of women, which is heart disease. Uh, and our residents volunteer their time and make it such a great success every year. All right, the intellectual dimension, while obviously more of a, a brain and heart component, has an indirect link with our heart health that goes back to socialization. All of our lecturers right now are coming to us like this through Zoom. We have lectures from Florida Atlantic University, Nova Southeastern University professors on a weekly basis. When residents come together for an intellectually stimulating program, there's socialization involved. There's emotional connections being made and maintained. Recently, we've had group spelling bees, trivia contests, um, other intellectually stimulating courses on video that can bring residents together. Uh, many residents have had to learn how to use a smart device like this and learn how to use Zoom and learn how to use FaceTime to uh, be able to reach out to friends and family. And learning a new skill, learning new intellectual skill has been a great way um, to keep those you know, who may be far away still close to us. All right, so now I'm gonna talk more about the physical dimension of wellness, probably the most obvious with regards to heart health. And Dr. Gardner touched on this uh, a tad already, but you know, we know what this pandemic has done. It has definitely increased our sedentary lifestyles, being on the computer, lack of physical activity, overeating, uptake in alcohol or smoking. And, and while you can't out exercise your diet, increasing your cardiovascular activities and strength training do have a direct benefit to heart health. So here we offer classes taught daily 
um, from our certified and educated instructors from balance training, strength training, sitter size and chair based classes, water aerobics in the pool, yoga on the weekend, and we look forward to bringing back Zumba here really soon. Uh, we even have our own YouTube channel with exercise videos that we've created um, that residents can watch in their home daily. So whether you come to a, a group fitness class, exercise on your own in one of our two fitness centers, or just spend time walking around La Posada's beautiful 22 acres, as many do even right now, there's always an opportunity for residents to stay strong, balanced, focused, and independent. Uh, we recently had an event called the Wisdom Warrior Challenge, where some of the residents that are on this panel, but over 30 residents competed in outdoor races from 50 meters to 1600 meters around our lakes. And we even had a hundred year old resident competing. Ask your grandkids if they ran a race during the pandemic. Our residents are definitely strong at heart. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen with you and show you just a few pictures of some of the programs uh, here at the community. All right, so some of these pictures are taken before COVID, so no masks. So uh, sitter size class, you can see, you know, packs of people and men and women, we can modify these classes so that if you're a little bit more advanced, you can do exercise standing, um, but if you need to, you can remain seated for the whole class. Balance training is super important. Uh, no matter what your age or fitness level, you can always do something to get better balance, to get your, your uh, brain better used to dealing with balance procedures. So water aerobics, uh, pools heat to 87 degrees. So, you know, this picture um, was a little bit older, but we've had our residents in the pool even last week. Uh, as I mentioned, our, our Go Red for Women bake sale, we raised a bunch of money for the American Heart Association. Uh, Dr. Gardner talked about blood pressure, uh, super important for those of you who maybe don't have a blood pressure monitor at home. We offer uh, blood pressure screens, and this, this is one we recently had this month. Um, getting together and socializing. This is a picture of one of our arts and crafts classes from a group that we have called Creatives Connect. Uh, those art instructors get tested every other week uh, when they come in and offer classes to residents. Uh, we recently had a big bingo and you can see some of our residents in our uh, dining room playing bingo here on a weekend. Uh, and we are, well, like I said, able to bring back entertainment. So Saturday afternoons, we have a series coming in and you know, all the entertainers are tested before they come in. They're wearing masks or face shields. So we feel comfortable being able to have these programs to bring residents together um, and, and keep socializing. So now, um, thank you for letting me share that with you. Uh, we're gonna put words into actions. And if you're able, I'd like you to just sit back and uh, I invite you to join our assistant wellness director, Jennifer Hicks in a short stretching and guided meditation routine so we can reduce some stress and tension while you're in your chairs at home. Uh, Jen, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Rick, so much. And uh, thank you everybody for participating uh, in the Zoom call. And I hope everybody's having an excellent afternoon. So let's start by sitting up nice and tall. If you can sit on the edge of your chair, that is preferred, make sure your chair is pretty stable. We'll sit up nice and tall and lift your chest and try to get both feet flat on the floor. And then you can start by taking a nice deep breath, inhaling through the stomach, letting the ribs and stomach expand and holding that breath for one, two seconds and then exhaling. And so let's try that again. Let's inhale, expand the rib cage, expand the chest, hold for one and two seconds and then exhale. Let's try that one more time. Inhaling for one, two, and exhaling. And again, sitting up tall, lifting that chest and rolling the shoulders back. Let's bring our arms out and let's inhale the arms up towards the ceiling or wherever you can go. You can clasp the hands if you want and then exhale back down. If you have any shoulder pain, feel free to move in your own range of motion. Inhaling the arms up. You can press those palms together 
reaching as high as you want to go, and then exhaling back down. Let's try that two more times. Inhaling the arms up, reaching up, tilting those shoulder blades back, palms together if you like, exhaling back down. Whatever feels comfortable, one more time. Inhaling the arms up, tilting those shoulders back, reaching towards the ceiling, and then exhaling back down. Let's take the chin and drop the chin to the chest and pull that neck down and hold for three, two, and one, and then bring the head back up. Let's try again, tilting the chin to the chest and holding for three, two, one, and back up. And if you feel comfortable, you can then tilt your head back and look to the ceiling for three, two, one, and then bring the head forward. Let's try that one more time, tilting the head back towards the ceiling for three, two, one, and then bringing the head forward. Let's take a moment to roll the shoulders back and then look over one shoulder and pause and then come back to the center. And then look over the opposite shoulder and pause and come back to the center. And now let's shrug those shoulders up for three seconds, two, one, and exhale back down. And let's try again. Inhale the shoulders up to the ears for three, two, one, and exhale. You're looking great. One more time. Up three, two, one, and drop those shoulders down. Wiggle those shoulders out. There we go. Good. Now let's take one arm and bring one arm up so you can keep that thumb back. Reach up and then out and around and back forward. Just watch the arm of your chair. So it would be arm up, thumb back, reach back and out and around. Now let's link the breath, inhaling the arm up, thumb back, stay tall, and then exhale the arm out and around. Now let's try the opposite arm, same idea. Inhale the arm up, thumb back, and then exhale the arm out and around. Good, same thing, thumb back, inhale up, and, and exhale out and around. Great job, one more time, inhale up, got thumb back, and then exhale back out and around. Good, now let's bring both arms and stretch the arms forward, round that upper back, pause this, and take a nice deep breath, inhale, Exhale, and when you come back up, you can turn the palms away and pull the shoulders back. I know you might not be able to see my hands. So let's inhale and round forward and hold on the exhale. And then another breath in and exhale, pull the elbows back with the palms up. Let's try that one last time. Inhale and rounding out the back, stretching through the back, holding for the exhale. And one last breath in, and then exhale, pull those elbows back. Good. So now let's reach one arm across the body and stretch through the back and then pull it back to where you started. We'll switch arms across, reach across the body and pull it back. So we'll go inhale across and exhale back. A little bit of a rotation. Inhale across and exhale back. And one more, inhale across and exhale, opposite side, inhale, and exhale, good. Let's bring one arm out, let's rotate the wrist around for just a few seconds, good. And then let's extend the hands and pull it into a fist. Again, just a few seconds here, we'll go three, two, one, and then let's switch arms. Opposite arm, rotate the wrist, whatever direction you want, just a few seconds and then extend the palm and come into a fist a few times to extend the fingers and use the wrist. Good. Again, sitting up nice and tall, let's do a slight rotation in your chair, just grabbing the side of the chair and turning. And you can look over your back shoulder and take a breath. Inhale and exhale. And then coming back to the center. And then the opposite side, a little bit of a rotation, Looking over that back shoulder, taking a breath, inhale and exhale, and then back to the center. 
Let's bring the arms back out and do some wide shoulder circles. If you have space, just watch your surroundings. We'll go five seconds, four, three, two, one, and then go the opposite direction. Some big circles, getting those shoulders warmed up, aiming for some shoulder mobility, fingertips together for three and two and one. Good, we can go arms across the chest next, and then we can just try some rotations in your chair. So you can go down and forward if you want, and then up, and back. So you're making a circle with the torso, rotating, lifting, coming down, and you can bend down further if you like. I'll just be out of the screen if I do that. So you can rotate slowly, get those hips and torso moving, take a breath, and then switch your arms and try to go the opposite direction. So you're bending down, extending back, Doing some rotation, bending the torso, moving the spine, getting some of the spinal segments moving, getting your stomach working as well. Good. Two more things we can try. We can try to now lift a hip. So I know you can't see my leg, but I'm lifting my knee up and back down. So let's take one knee and lift it up, straight up off the ground. The foot is off the ground and back down. And then let's switch to the opposite leg. Lift the knee up, the foot's off the ground, and then I'm putting my foot back down. I'm lifting my leg back up, and then putting my leg back down. And then we can just finish with some ankle circles where you extend a leg and just roll your ankle around off the floor. Let's try that for just a few seconds. We'll go five, four, three, two, one. And then if you wanna try the opposite leg, opposite ankle, just rotating the ankle around. I know you can't see me, but it's going on for five, four, three, two, and one. Perfect. And again, I'll have you reposition, sit up really tall. Imagine a string pulling your torso up to the ceiling. Let's take a nice deep breath and we can finish with a very short meditation. So if you can, I'd like you to close your eyes. Remain sitting up nice and tall with your eyes closed. Breathe slowly and evenly in and out through your nose. Let your energy settle by anchoring your attention to your breath. Soften your shoulders, your torso, and your legs. Breathe in deep, breathe out deep. Feel the gentle rise and fall of the body as the body breathes itself and let yourself drop into a state of being rather than doing. Right here, right now, just be present with your breath. And as you watch the breath, of course, thoughts will arise. The mind is energy and always at play. As you notice these thoughts, watch them as if from a distance. You are not your thoughts, but the witness of these thoughts. It can help to visualize your thoughts as if they're bubbles. A thought arises, it floats up into our awareness, and then if left alone, it will float by, dissolve, or dissipate. Stay anchored to your breath as you play with your awareness. Be present, but be aware of your thoughts as they arise like bubbles. Understand that these thoughts are not solid and not fixed. Avoid chasing or attaching to your thought. Avoid trying to stop thoughts or push them away. Be aware of thoughts, but not thinking. Breathe in deep, breathe out deep. Nothing to fight against, nothing to stop. Love your thoughts and at the same time, let them go. Remain present right here and right now with your breath. Breathe in deep, breathe out deep. The mind is energy and energy is always at play. It's up to you to choose which type of energy you'd like to invite in and then simply let the rest go. Breathe in and breathe out. Identify with the energy of stability, peacefulness, and ease. Now let's take one last deep breath. Again, inhaling, holding for one second, two seconds, exhaling, and you can open your eyes, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your peaceful afternoon. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you, Jan. I'm ready for a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Very relaxed. 
So hopefully you enjoyed that, got a little taste of what our residents get to experience almost every day, both in group classes uh, that we do, as Rick described, as well as one-on-one, -on -one, uh, if you so wished. Uh, we've got some talented individuals. As you can see, Jennifer, certainly one of our uh, talented associates uh, and the wonderful things she does for our residents. So, so next, we'd like to have you meet some of those residents. And, um, and so, Anne, if you'd like to um, help transition to the resident panel. Absolutely. So welcome everybody. I, um, I know I've been seeing some, some questions come up and um, I know that we have, I'm, I'm kind of relaxed and so it's kind of hard for me to even talk about this, but Heather, you um, I think have experienced firsthand Chef Clay's um, cuisine and I thought maybe you'd be a perfect person to sort of talk about, you know, um, based on his presentation today and what you've experienced, um, tell us a little bit about how that heart healthy dining um, is for you. <laughs> uh, my husband and I are great admirers of Clay's dishes. And until I heard him speak, I had no idea he was dis uh, discreetly disguising ingredients we should not be eating, like salt, sugar, etc., with healthier alternative substitutes. And whatever clay makes, you'd never suspect any of this. It's always varied, delicious, and beautifully presented. And in spite of dining at, Mo at Mallorca as often as we do, we haven't put on any weight, enjoying it all, which is unusual with gourmet food. And as for clay's homemade bread, it's particularly tempting, but nice to know it's not doing us any harm. It's delightful, all of it. So Clay, your question is, what's your secret? How do you make that happen? A lot of love. <laughs> First of all, I was gonna say, can we get Dr. Gardner back? I think I pulled something in my arm. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, no, I, I really appreciate that, Miss Little. And uh, I'm, that's the whole thing. And I think you're gonna see the same kind of uh, genre out of everybody. It's a balance of everything that we do. Uh, it's a balance of our exercise, of what we put into our bodies, of how we're spiritually, emotionally, and everything like that. So our, our cooking becomes a balance. You know, it's a balance of how can we make something delicious? How can we make it a little bit more healthier? And how can we, we get the residents to really like it? So using, like I said, flavored oils. Uh, we cook with a lot of celery juice and onion juice and things like that to bring up the vegetables, to give them a little bit more, a little bit more peel, a little bit more flavor. And we don't have to add salt to them. You know, we don't have to finish everything with butter and things like that. We use extra virgin olive oil or uh, we'll only cook and not extra virgin, but we'll cook in olive oil as well, you know, to keep it a little bit more healthier that way. But I really appreciate, especially when Miss Little and a lot of residents do like the food and it is a lot of work out of us, but we like it. We like to challenge ourselves and we challenge ourselves with that every day. That's awesome. Um, no, I know you have a personal story, actually, after listening to Dr. Garner say, listen, get in to see your doctor through telemedicine and, um, you know, keep your heart in check. Tell us a little bit about that. And you're on mute as well. Uh, well, today I actually had gone to my cardiologist and uh, <laughs> you did clay. Yes, I did. Oh, and uh, that's awesome. it's, it's kind of weird that it happened that way. You know, uh, with the COVID protocols and things like that about getting into your doctor, I think the, the most stressful thing is it's the, you don't have a waiting room. You don't have a lot of things to do. So you just kind of, you have to wait in your car, things like that. So it's a big change, but uh, you know, having a, having a, you know, cardiologist that I can go to and, and especially during these times and things like that. And yeah. you know, I want to make sure I take care of myself, you know, just as, as he would say, I want to balance. I want to balance in my life. Yeah. And so, and so, um, Ms. Noel, tell us a little bit about your recent experience. Well, like everybody else, we've been um, staying close to home, having telemed visits with our doctor. And my husband has a history of heart disease. Um, just briefly, we're here 11 years. And about 10 years ago, uh, a La Posada associate called my attention to the fact that Artie, my husband, needed to see a cardiologist. And thankfully, due to that advice, um, he's been living hale and hearty for 10 years with me. Uh, I'm very grateful to La Posada for that. 
But something that is very important, um, although my husband's not able to take part in uh, many of the activities, you know, the more um, energetic activities, we do have an on-site outpatient clinic with excellent physical therapists. And he goes for physical therapy twice a week because it is important that he keep moving, that his heart continue pumping, even though there's major occlusion. So he looks forward to that because they joke with him all the time so that he's not even aware that they're making him work. So uh, we've got the equipment there as well as in our fitness center. And uh, we have a fitness center in the Mallorca building as well as in the uh, dedicated fitness center building and then in the outpatient clinic as well. So there's no reason that people can't take advantage of exercising even if they don't go to the classes. So I'm very thankful that we have that available. Well, that's an amazing story. And, and I know, Faye, you, we talked about adding to that the, um, the fact that you're able to get outside and, and in fresh um, sunshine and, and fresh air, um, even though it's a, a gated community. Talk a little bit about, and you're on mute as well, Faye, um, talk a little bit about you know, what that experience has been. <clears throat> um, I, <clears throat> much of it has been covered um, by other folks that were speaking, but he, we do have an absolutely beautiful campus here. I call it a campus. It's a beautiful area. And our wellness and activity staff, along with our food service staff and, and everybody else that works here, when COVID hit us last March, like it did everybody else, almost instantaneously, they adapted everything for us from food service to outside classes uh, around the, the lake and so forth. Um, so we had that capability and the nice thing was we didn't necessarily have to get dressed and go outside. We could be on our balcony where nobody could see us, but we could see and hear uh, Jennifer and Rick. So that was great. Um, we also have the channel 63 that Rick alluded to that has many of Jennifer's classes taped and they re uh, um, broadcast them for us to be able to use in our apartments. So absent the socialization, but sometimes the timing is just perfect because I don't want to get out of my nightgown yet, but I can do all my exercises inside my apartment and go from there. Um, and we also had up until recently, but I'm sure she'll be back, uh, the person that was um, running our physical therapy facility and the uh, Wisdom Warrior Project or activity was referenced to um, where she, she was dynamite. She would encourage us all to just keep moving and to move. And it was a, a really a wonderful event. It was outside here at La Posada in, in a safe way it was done. And other community, senior communities also participated, but they participated in their own community. And then the, um, physical therapy uh, coordinators got together and measure, you know, did all the measurements who won and so forth. It, there's just, you've heard of all the things we can do here. Um, it's amazing to me how well uh, you can address almost any need you have here. I, I truly can't think of anything. And I've been here about a year and a half and I just love it. I got here about six months before COVID and then there was COVID <laughs> for the past year, but it's been a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience. My timing couldn't have been better. Don't know how it worked out so well, but it certainly did. That's awesome. Uh, I know, um, Carol, you actually moved during the pandemic. Do you want to talk a little bit about that too? Is it a safe move and are you happy you did that? Yes, I'm very happy that I did that. I've been here for eight months. I came last June and I chose my apartment by doing a virtual tour. I never even saw it before I moved in. Wow. And one of my big surprises was I really thought I'd open my front door and walk into a hallway. No, I opened my front door and walk out to a lovely, you know, planted area. 
and very close to my car, which is convenient, but it's worked out so well. And everybody has really been lovely in getting, you know, me settled and adjusted. And I'm very, very happy here. And I also want to tell uh, uh, Chef Clay that as a registered dietitian, I'm very appreciated, appreciative of all the efforts you go to, to give us, you know, very safe, uh, healthy foods and prepared in a safe manner. And I recognize all the efforts that that takes. So we may have, um, we're going to have a meeting soon and I may have a couple of challenges for you to come <laughs> up with a healthy recipe. <laughs> so we'll see. That's great. Well, and Rick, I have one last question for you. You know, you shared um, such a great way of presenting the six dimensions of wellness. Are any of these classes available at any time for um, maybe some outside individuals that we have on this call to sample, um, kind of like what we did today with Jen, or is it um, a way that they could even come in? And is there a safe way to do that? I'm just curious where you stand on that. Yeah, absolutely. All of our uh, classes right now uh, are on our YouTube channel. So if you're familiar enough to get on Zoom, you can get on a YouTube channel. So if you just uh, do a little search for Kisco Senior Living La Posada, our YouTube channel will come up. And I think there's about 80 videos that are up there right now. Uh, there are exercise classes uh, that are put together into playlists that we can play each day. So anyone with an internet connection anywhere across the world can access those classes, uh, as well as just some clips of other things that are going on throughout the community that we can share and highlight on social media. That's awesome. And I'm, I'm sure you're going to personally get on TikTok and do the same thing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We actually have a new uh, class that Jennifer and I are working on. If any of you out there saw the uh, cardio drumming uh, mm -hmm. TikTok that went off, we're actually putting together some of our own routines with songs so we can offer residents uh, a cardio drumming class, something we've never tried before and we're rolling out. So for La Posada residents who are hearing that, you didn't hear anything right now. <laughs> yeah, we're always trying to come up with, with new things to do and uh, social media is one way to stay involved with what other people are doing. And when we can steal some great ideas and bring them to our residents, we'll do it. That's awesome. And Brad, I'm gonna turn it back over to you to close this out. This was great. Thank you very much, Ann. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you all so much for joining us today. As you can tell, we've got a lot of passionate associates and residents that just absolutely love La Posada. Um, you know, our focus is always on our residents every day when we come to their home to work um, and, uh, and our focus is them. And so hopefully you got a little bit of taste of that. And I can tell you that we think that uh, La Posada, whether it's in 2020 during COVID, whether it's now in 2021, as we head into God forbid hurricane season, you know, this is the best place for you to be, as you can see and uh, for many, many reasons. And so we'd love to invite you, our community is open. We've got about 98% uh, plus of our residents that have been vaccinated. Uh, we're doing uh, community experiences. Uh, we'd love for you to come in and, and get a taste and experience La Posada, uh, meet some of the residents that were just on this call that really make this a unique and a special place to live. And then also maybe take a class um, with Jennifer or with Rick. So we'd love to extend that offer. Hopefully that this all enticed you to get a little bit more information. Uh, whether it's a it's a right time for you now or maybe you maybe not for years, um, we just tell others about La Posada and everything that you learned here, um, and that that's all we could ask. So thank you all again so much for today, and uh, hope to see you soon. And take care of your heart. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Take care of your heart. <laughs>